dual review is brought to you by spiderwolf.com. On today's dual review, it's Metro Last Light. I'm RJ. And I'm Nick. Let's get to it. Hey everybody, today is the 21st and we're taking a look at Metro Last Light. That's right, and this is the uh, sequel to Metro 2033, the game, um, and not really the actual book. Now, the Metro series is a book series uh, written by Russian author Dmitry Glikovsky, uh, which he started when he was 18. And what's fun about that is he, uh, he put it out for free so that anyone can download it and read it, and then it just kind of built up so much so that you know it was being translated in different languages it was being sold worldwide yeah, awesome. yeah he made a lot of money doing it by pushing something out for free and uh so metro 2033 came out i mean 20 yeah 2033 came out and then the spiritual i mean the successor to that was supposed to be 2034 but at the ending of the first game they decided to take it a different way and actually this one starts off with one of the two endings from the first game uh, right, which is it, which is interesting because you know you choose your ending or whatever you fight for your ending, and now they've kind of decided that you've chosen this. But. Right, right. Uh, and that and that in this game, Metro Last Light is not uh, uh, the actual adaptation to the book Twenty Thirty Four. Although this one yeah. was originally going to be uh, Metro Twenty Thirty Four, so I guess they renamed it to try and keep it separate from the book. Um, but it's still a really fun game. Uh, you spend. Yeah, more... I don't think there's a problem with that at all. Actually, no. Yeah. You spend uh, more time on the surface uh, than you did in the first game, uh, and it just all looks so brilliantly. Beforehand, the the the, uh, the surface was a complete wasteland, but now it's starting to grow vegetation. There's more there's more creatures on on the surface. You have to look out for the dark one. Well, you don't really have to look out for the dark ones. It's merely the it's more the um, the mutated. Uh, animals, which are just really cool, I think, because, you know, you get the hound dogs, which might be giant rats because they got those long tails, and, you know, then you have the spiders, which are cool. Yeah, and spiders, the thing, scorpion, yeah. Yeah, the thing about the spiders is you can't shoot, well, you can shoot ammunition at them, but you're pretty much wasting it. They really die uh, with your flashlight's light, so you kind of have to... Uh, get them to flip over and you can stab them in the yeah, stomach. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and I like, yeah, I like... You're warding them off. Yeah, I like the little hairs that they have. It just it just adds to, like, the wooliness and the kind of weird area that they live in. So basically what happens is your your player is named Artum, and he is... He's, uh, he's newly a ranger, and rangers are people who are allowed on the surface to go out and do things. So he's now a ranger, and he's following Hunter, who was the... His, um, mentor in the previous, um... The previous video game, uh, as it is, as he is somewhat now, he's, he takes more of a backseat, and you barely ever see him. And he has this notion about the dark ones, and he's trying to steer you. And there's a lot of uh, yeah, you have some connection to the dark ones, right? Right, and that's and that's cool because it, it adds to some really creepy moments, like in the opening uh, sequence. And I don't want to give it away because it is somewhat of a spoiler, but uh, in the opening sequences, you know, somewhere in the beginning. Uh, you have this moment where the Dark Ones attack, and you're shooting the Dark Ones, and there's like this haze, and you were with a team, and then, you know, I, I don't want to give it away, but it was yeah. just so cool and creepy. And then that kind of does other things like the shadows, which are, I guess, the spirits of people who haven't gone away. Yeah, uh, right, and there's this really cool section, like, uh, er, fairly early on, not too far into the game, uh, well... Maybe a third of the way through. Anyway, uh, you're going through a tunnel, and then there's this kind of little... You get off, and you can explore, and one of the rooms is just is just littered with these black, like, shadow things fading in and out, and it really takes the game into this weird, supernatural, like, horror place. Yeah, yeah. And it really affected me. It was cool. The, the first one, I actually... The one that you're talking about, it was really cool, but I could kind of see it coming. Once it started happening, I'm like, oh, okay. I yeah, know what's yeah, going yeah. On. But anyway... um. Yeah, it is really neat to do that. And then one thing you haven't touched upon yet, and maybe you want to keep going with the story, but we don't want to give everything away, No, is it's a very immersive game, yes. as was the first one. Now, uh, neither Nick or I have been able to play the first one. We've been meaning to, but it just got pushed off. And um, But it's a very immersive game where you go up uh, you know, onto the, the nuked you know, grounds and you have to wear a gas mask, and you have to mine that gas mask. Uh, it can be cracked, you have to wipe it clean, you have to change the filters, uh, and it all, you know, is like this little watch. You've got this cool watch that tells you the time left on your filter, and then it goes blue when you're, you know, seeable, seen, when, yeah. when you can be seen. Um, so that's really cool. It does rely on kind of a stealth mechanic. I mean, you don't have to play it that way, but you, you definitely uh, will have some tough times if you don't. Um, so yeah, I didn't mean to steal your thunder, it just... 
Yeah, uh, I guess I'll, t I'll, I'll compound them upon that because there is a lot of immersion in here. And what I really like is the different um, things that you can do. Like, for example, every now and then you'll have an air weapon. I usually keep an air rifle which shoots those little tiny pellets. Um, and you have to fill it up with air. It has a gauge and the gauge will kind of go down. So what you do is you have to go into your little... L2 menu, uh, I don't know what, I guess the button for uh, an Xbox 360 would be the, just the left trigger, right? Because the yeah. other one is the left bumper. Um, but on PlayStation, uh, it would be the left, uh, the L2 button. And so when you hold that, you get these two reticles. On the direction pad, uh, you have on the right and left, you have one for your flat or one for battery, which lets you charge up your flashlight. And I think it does something to the uh, night vision goggles, but I barely ever use the night vision goggles because all of my sights had night vision, so I didn't really have to worry about it. Um, and then the other one was for your air rifle, which unfortunately I wish they did more with because you have your weapon in hand, the air rifle weapon, and uh, then you go to, to the, uh, the menu, you select it, and then you have to sit there and pump it so that it fills up with air. And I wish that they did more with the, the air pumping, you know, like it had more, like you could use it for more weapons, you can use it in different ways, but for what it was, it was just really cool. Uh, yeah, so, a lot of the other weapons also have like this mechanical kind of, you know, like forcing the clip through the top and right. stuff like that. And it's, right. it's just really cool. And they have this little charger thing, which I'm not necessarily in love with because it's cool that you have to take it out and like charge things. But it's just like one pump, two pump, and then you can move this massive door or something. Yeah, yeah, so he's talking about off. the battery charger, which is also an electrical accelerant, I guess. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, you brought up clip size, and I wanted to talk about that because this is very immersive, so there's really no uh, heads-up display. And even more so in the hard mode, which doesn't tell you how many, uh, how much ammo you have. You know, Every now and then you'll have like a little white icon telling you how much ammo is in the gun that you have, and that'll go away. But in the expert mode or the hard mode, it does, it's not there, so you really have to pay attention to the actual clip that you're putting into the gun to see how much ammo you have. And that would be the Ranger mode, which is not even accessible unless you pay for it. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Oh. It's, it's more immersive. It takes away your reticle, and it makes it you know things more scarce and whatever. And uh, yeah, unless you bought like pre-order or whatever, um, I think you have to pay for that. Well, and it's only five case, bucks. But yeah, still. yeah. The, the game is the game is awesome. Uh, it, one of the biggest drawbacks that people have been talking about is that it's very linear. You really can't go anywhere. Um, you know, you can't explore or anything like Far Cry, but it, for what it is, it's just amazing. It's it's a survival horror. It's yeah. uh, there's some exploration, not a not a lot, but enough to to get me interested. And I love exploring. Um, there's a lot of different types of enemies that are just fun. You know, you have uh, there's really three types. Um, although the dark ones, I guess, don't really count because they're not prevalent in this game but you have uh, the mutants you know so you have like the spiders and the the, the demons or what they de yeah. the demons or devils I yeah, demons. Goes. okay the demons and then you have that cool <laughs> swamp monster with the mantis like arms you know so you have those and then you have uh different factions of people who have different types of weapons and you have to deal with them all the while you know going through the, the metro which is the um Moscow subway station and trying to figure things out and meeting new people and getting surrounded by new things and that and that's one thing that I really praise is the environment they they really do a great job of you know differ, differentiating the different areas that you're in like one different one stretch of subway is different than another because it depends on who occupies it how they built it up what kind of little forts they created and then the subway stations are like these hubs for people where you can you know sell your ammo because there's no um there's no money system. You have you you have good ammo, which was like the yeah, pre-war, yeah, the military grade ammo, as opposed to the ones that they made in Metro, um, which you can use. You can actually use the currency ammo in weapons. Just know that you're yeah, spending money every time. Money. Yeah, and I I originally thought this was going to be like a Fallout kind of game where it was more of a sandboxy kind of thing in between, like maybe some side missions or whatever. But no, it's it's really more of a tailored narrative, which which I appreciate. I'm always one that kind of likes that narrative. Now I do like a little bit of choice, and this has you know very limited choice, but they're telling a very good story, so it's kind of this trade off. And we haven't touched upon the real emotional moments that they have as well that really get you into this world. And yeah. Um, yeah, you, you see kind of the big event, then you know the nukes coming down or whatever, and you see it from different people's you know point of view, and some of them are very uh, touching. Uh, and then also, I love that it's from the Russian point of view because it's kind of like this fresh thing that I you know I haven't spent a lot of time you know in Russia, so so it's just a unique thing, and the accents are great, and the acting is all great. Yeah. Um, and it's fun also to go from encampment to encampment. Of course, they've they've done this in all the kind of post-apocalyptic games, but I think it does really well in this one, where you just kind of, you can hear a conversation going on. Yeah. And usually they're very heavy, 
sometimes it's like kids that are like, oh, you know, like someone's doing a shadow puppet of a bird and they're like, oh, it's a demon. It's a demon, right? It's like, no, it's a bird. You know, what's a bird? Is it like a demon? Will it kill you? You know, it's like, it's going to, whatever. So it, you see how different it is now. And, um, you know, you get snippets of conversations about, you know, my husband was in trouble and then they forced me to do this and then my husband died or whatever. So if you care to sit and listen, you'll get a lot of in-between little stories that are all, you know, I think pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, again, they're pretty heavy, so so be warned. Um, but, yeah, this game is, is super fun. It's not terribly long, um, right? How, how many hours would you say you'd... You uh, finished it, I haven't yet. Uh, yeah, I, I did beat it. it. Uh, I must have spent seven or eight hours, um, solid oh, hours. Um, it's and, gotta be more than that. Well, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I think I think I spent like three hours playing it the first night, and then um, the day after I spent uh, like five hours or so. So yeah, I think it's like eight hours, but it is linear, and I did do a lot of exploring, so I don't know how much. I didn't sit down and listen to every single conversation, and I certainly didn't read all of those notes, and I don't think well, I found I'm surprised it's not that short, so, you know, I must be a pretty good, hefty way through it, too, if it's that short. I mean, because most games are at least 10 hours kind of thing, yeah, so well, I would assume it's probably 10 hours. But I, I, I'm, I'm going off of what I'm guessing. I, I think it's 8 hours. I don't know. Um, but, but it's it's not. It's he not. does lock his door and just kind of Yeah, yeah. Do it, so. I zone out sometimes, and next thing I know, it's morning, and I'm like, what's going on? Um, also, this is a game that I actually ended up downloading from uh, PlayStation Network. Uh, it was uh, $12 cheaper to do it that way uh, for PSN you know, Plus uh, members. And I think that's really cool because I was able to download it actually onto two machines. I have two PS3s and let him play it before he's had a chance to go out and get it. So so it was a lot of fun that way, and I do appreciate that. I kind of it's I miss having the disc because I can't just like give it to him to loan it or whatever. But I like the ability to do that. If this was a multiplayer game, which I guess you've heard that maybe they're going to do something. Right, I heard that somewhere along the awesome. lines there might be a multiplayer, but the, it, it, there's nothing certain, so we don't know. So that would be awesome to be able to, you know, have one game on two different machines and, you know, whatever. But yeah. uh, anyway, uh, so that that is cool, and I, I'm kind of looking forward to being able to download my games now, but... It is a little scary. Yeah, and then it also takes up room on your hard drive. You may have to go out and buy another. That's hard true. Drive. I mean, that's probably why I haven't downloaded more because there's a lot of full scale games now. You know, I was actually thinking of getting Injustice that way, but yeah, uh, it will eat up my hard drive real yes, quick. Yes, it will. But you know, we'll see for the PS4. I can't wait for that. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, yes, beautiful. I I hardly you know echo everything that he said about it being just a great game. It's a great, pleasant play, and um, immersive, great uh, first person shooting. Uh, that stealth mechanic is very interesting because it also facilitates the story because you're sitting there, you know, going through air ducts and you can kind of listen to what's going on in right. between. And... Or you can do something about it. Every now and then there's like an interrogation going on and the bad guys are threatening to kill some people. Well, you can sit there and listen to what they're saying, see if they give up any information, or you can just go out and save them. So I didn't know that at first yeah, because sometimes, sometimes you get stuck, sometimes the camera tells you. Let, or you know doesn't let you move any further so the game kind of halts you but sometimes you can and i just kind of let it just happen and i didn't know so so a lot of fun so don't miss it all right guys uh, thanks for watching please subscribe to our youtube channels and uh, watch a great playlist game lab's been a lot of fun yes it has and please leave comments we love comments and you can help support us by buying our wares at spiderwolf.com that's right t-shirts a card game art print short stories and more and please check out my new blog it's fist37.tumblr.com I am blogging as characters and releasing updates, uh, all in efforts uh, to get ready for the Kickstarter release of my Enhanced Edition card game. That'll probably be in June. So please check it out and uh, comment. If you like it, share it, uh, support us that way. Thank you very much. See you later. Oh. 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 Next time I'll do a review with Chinese Super Ninjas. Okay, just do a level check. Just tell me who your name is and what you're doing here. My name is Nick and I'm sitting here. All right. What are we doing next week? I don't know. Yes, you do. Yeah, I do. Hence why I have the books in my hand. I am Dimitri. He's Russian, it's not, you know, it's not like Stuart or something. Stuart Stewartson. It's Makronov enough. Well, it's...
Hey everybody, today is the 21st and we're taking a look at Metro Last Light. That's right, and this is a uh, downloadable game, well it, it can be bought either way, but we downloaded it for PlayStation Network, it's also an Xbox Live arcade. Probably don't want to put a moniker of downloadable game, because it's, I mean, you know, it's, it's, yeah, okay, okay. it's a real game. It is a real game. Full scale. Thanks. Full scale, real game. Oh! 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 me. We did. You got hit with the ricochet? I won the day, but I died. At what cost? <laughs> Victor, at what cost? I think that's the first one that actually has hit one of us. Like a ricochet. So I'm officially dead before 500. Sucks. Yes! By your hand, nonetheless. That super sucks. Uh, I always knew it would be a friend. Just my friend. 